you very much for waiting. And thank you for attending the symposium of Washokudo, the World Japanese Cuisine Show. Now, on this stage, Mr. Koru Okuda, Master of Ginza Koju, the Kaiseki restaurant, uh, inviting him. We are going to start the symposium with a the theme of respect for nature, local ingredients, and the terroir. And the Mr. Uh, Alain Ducas, French chef, is with us as a guest speaker. Please welcome Mr. Okuda and Mr. Ducas. Good afternoon. My name is Toru Okuda. I run a Japanese kaiseki restaurant named Koju in Ginza, Tokyo. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'd like to express my thanks to all the uh, people who were involved in the organization of this meeting. And also, I run a sushi shop named Harumi. And uh, in September, two years ago in Paris, I opened a Japanese restaurant named Okuda. Uh, this is very close to uh, the, the Hotel Plaza Atene, where uh, Mr. Ducas runs his restaurant. Today, vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the people from mass media and the culinary professional from the world, uh, I was asked to think about what we can communicate from Japan. First of all, I think we need to communicate the Japanese fish distribution system and the technique named Ikijime. Japan is a country surrounded by oceans, so Japanese do love fish, among other the ingredients. And the best way to fish among Japanese is to eat it raw, or as sashimi. In order to eat sashimi, raw fish, deliciously, the fishermen use pole and line fishing in order not to damage. And also, they take care uh, so that the, the net fishing would not damage fish. And uh, we use dedicated vehicle to bring live fish to markets. And the largest fish market in the world is Tsukiji, and every day from Hokkaido to Kyushu, uh, traveling many hours, uh, good fish are transported live. Then there is an auction in the market, then the brokers uh, conduct the ikijime technique so that the, the fish would be provided in good uh, condition as uh, uh, sashimi and also for the ingredients of sushi. Ikijime as a technique and a transportation system using the fish tank to transport the fish alive must be the best system. So uh, last year, uh, near Arc de Triomphe in Paris, I opened a fish shop uh, focusing on live fish. I went to uh, Bhutan and Marmuj and uh, discussed this issue with the fishermen and the fishermen's association. And gradually, they started to provide us uh, fish with fish live. In Europe, this is quite innovative because they don't have a custom to transport the fish catch alive. But the fish in France is very delicious when they are delivered alive. The taste is very strong, as if it was treated with kombu. And uh, if you keep it for 10 days uh, in a refrigerator, it remains OK. I think this may be due to the difference of the salinity or the difference of the current uh, of the seawater. And the fish in France is somewhat different from uh, Japan. The, the system I am preparing may not be perfect, but I believe I can bring fish live to Paris. By delivering uh, live fish, I'm sure that the, the French cuisine and the world cuisine are going to transform. Because so far you had to heat a fish in order to eat, but now you would be able to eat fish live. In Japan, sashimi and sushi are very famous, but I'm sure with your wonderful creativity and ideas, you would be able to uh, come up with a, a very original dishes. So you can serve fish both raw and cooked. And it would be possible for you to enjoy the taste of the fish itself. 
and uh, this is would be healthier and light and better for health. So for customers all over the world, we, the uh, culinary professional, should go to that direction. Treating fish like this in Japan is something very uh, normal, but uh, it's not done abroad. Why is it? I think this may be due to the differences of the culinary culture and the differences of the, 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 the characteristics of the Japanese people. Who Japanese uh, eating fish raw is part of the culture, but the Western people mainly uh, uh, treated animal meat as a G food ingredient, so they may have a different value system about the fish, and the Japanese people are not good at communicating. Japan is an insular country, and the things would not reach abroad if you don't make any efforts. And there is a language barrier, language barrier. The Japanese are not good at communicating whatever we have of value. I am with Mr. Alan Lucas. And the, after the renewal of his restaurant in Plaza Atene, he's already using uh, uh, fish treated with ikijime technique. I'm sure with the help of Mr. Dukas, I think the distribution system of the live fish and the technique of ikijime uh, will be widely communicated in France and also in the world. Now I am going to show you uh, video clips so that you can actually see how ikijime technique can have impact on the changes of the white meat fish. If you have uh, anything to say, Mr. Dukas, please. I think Mr. Okuda is very courageous to decide to come to Paris because the French people are very difficult to deal with. French people, in comparison to Japanese people, may be tougher in terms of anything new. Mr. Okuda may be having difficulty because the level or the superiority of the fish, or he would like to provide the same high quality of fish as he is doing in Japan. We don't have any custom to eat raw fish of high quality because it's not part of our custom. So cultural exchanges are quite important. Mr. Okuda decided to take a leadership. So in this kind of cultural exchange, it's wonderful that the, I am becoming the first customer of the ikijime technique that Mr. Okuda is teaching us. By using fish treated this way, the highest level quality of fish of the food stuff will be ensured. Fish treated with ikejime technique. In my restaurant, uh, he removed blood from the fish meat. When the fish is cold, immediately after that ikejime is conducted, and also the blood is removed. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Okuda is uh, trying to achieve something higher because he is a perfectionist. He wants to deliver fish live to his restaurant in Paris. This is what he is trying to do. He's a typical Japanese uh, who wants to be perfect, and I'm, I believe in his success. I am a strong supporter of his activities in Paris. For Washoku in Paris, I think his message is quite important. Highest level Washoku restaurant is his restaurant. The Parisians, customers in Paris, may not be used to such a high quality. The, the Parisians are not yet used to the high quality provided Mr. Okuda. Uh, the Okuda 
uh, which is uh, providing best of the best washoku in Paris. Well, the, because of the prices, which are high, well, Parisians are not used to paying uh, such a high uh, prices despite the values. So you need to explain to French customers, Parisians, what is the difference the story told by Mr. Okuda must be understood by people in France. And I'm sure that we are going to build the relationship based on trust. I have no concerns. French cuisine and Japanese cuisines by continuing the exchanges. I'm sure we can understand each other better. I'm sure that the Okuda in Paris is going to make a great success. Now I would like to show you a video and uh, I will show you the impact of ikijime on uh, hirame flounder, a white meat fish. And uh, because uh, the meat is uh, whitish, it may be difficult to see, but the ikijime does have an impact. This is Tsukiji market. I think many of you are familiar with it. The best of the best fish and seafood are delivered to Tsukiji alive. So these are the, the shops who both have the tank for live fish and for or the ikijime. This is the hirame, a flounder, and we do uh, the ikijime. Uh, you let out blood by cutting the neck using deba knife and do the same at the base of the uh, tail to get rid of blood and you uh, apply wire uh, through the spinal cord to destroy uh, the nerves and this way you can delay the rigor mortis. Although the fish is dead but uh, its body remains alive. And it's quite important to remove the blood. Without doing it, with time, the blood goes inside the muscles, and this would generate bad smells. This is a case of Suzuki, Japanese sea bass. Like Hirame, you cut the bone of the neck by using a knife to let out the blood. And the metal wire is applied through the spinal cord to remove nerves. From ancient times, Japanese has uh, looked at the fish as uh, medical professionals would observe it. You can see the comparison between hirame with and without ikijime technique. Here you can see that uh, there is, on this side, at the neck, there is a, a trace of knife applied to cut. This is the first time to make a request to send uh, fish without the ikijime, although I'm working in this field for uh, 16 years, meaning all the fish I receive is with uh, uh, ikijime. This is the one with ikijime, and the rigor is delayed and the meat is uh, transparent. But 
But if you don't have uh, ikijime, this is the one without ikijime, and uh, next to that one is, is with ikijime. This one is without ikijime. You can see that the meat is getting whitish and not transparent. But the one with uh, ikijime, the meat remains transparent. And uh, if the color is uh, not clear, then it would cause the bad smell that you would feel when you eat the fish. This is a difference. This is the one without the technique of ikijime. Uh, the color gets whitish and not transparent with the passage of time. As for ikijime technique, if the size is 2 to 3 kilo, kilograms, 8 to 14 hours after ikijime technique is the best time for the good taste. Immediately after uh, ikijime, just like meat, uh, there are no tastes you can feel. But after a time, you start to feel taste by removing nerves. The, the meat remains alive, although the fish itself is dead. That is the important impact of ikijime. Without ikijime, with time, the whitish part expands, expands and the rigor mortis is accelerated. This one is without ikijime eight hours later. This is with uh, ikijime eight hours later. And uh, this is the one who had ikijime 24 hours earlier. The difference may be difficult to see. With time, this one on the right, uh, the meat is getting whited, but this is because of ripening, and the meat itself is getting uh, more uh, stiff. This is the one without ikijime. Eight hours later, uh, the meat is already whitish. And you can see the skin and those close to the skin, and you can see the difference. And this is the one without ikijime technique. The meat is very white, and you can see that the blood is coming inside the, the muscles. Uh, this is the one with ikijime, so eight hours later, uh, the, even the eight hours later, the meat is fresh and uh, you can also taste, you can feel the good taste. This is 24 hours after ikijime, so the meat is somewhat stiff. Uh, with the passage of time, the ripening starts and the meat gets stiffer. And uh, this is slicing for sashimi. This one is without ikijime, only eight hours later. But uh, the meat may be still uh, alive, but the color is uh, whitish and the transparency is being lost. This may be the best one eight hours after ikijime. The meat is transparent, and you, when you make slice, it's as if uh, the, the sliced uh, meat stick to the knife because the meat is well alive. In comparison to the one without ikijime, you can see that the level of transparency is quite different. This one is 24 hours after ikijime. The meat is somewhat stiff, stiffer. Cutter is not so transparent. 
because of the start of ripening, you can see the differences. This one is without ikijime. Uh, this is the best eight hours after ikijime, uh, after removing nerves. And this is one more day after ikijime. And you can see the subtle changes of the color with the passage of the time. It may be difficult to see eating fish raw requires uh, the, the recognition of subtle differences, and that would have a direct impact on the different level and the quality of taste you can enjoy. Two days later, two days after ikijime technique is applied, this is the one uh, immediately after ikijime. And uh, this is uh, the day two after ikijime on the right. As you can see here, that the, the rigor is more promoted and the meat is stiffer and uh, getting uh, more white dish. And two days after ikijime, even though we removed uh, the blood because of the rigor, the meat is stiffer. This one, immediately after ikijime, the meat is flesh and uh, it's not stiff at all, very soft. This is one day after, and uh, this one did not have ikijime, so the stiffening already started. This one had uh, ikijime, and one day after ikijime, the muscles around here remain soft. And uh, this is the second day, uh, two days after ikijime, the meat is uh, stiffer. As the time passes, you get more uh, taste, but the water comes in. So if you want to uh, eat it as a sashimi, eh, too much water would not be good, and that would impact the taste negatively. But uh, what would be the impact of ikijime in the case of sushi? Sashimi means you eat fish broth using uh, salt and soy sauce, but uh, it doesn't uh, come with rice. But in the case of sushi, although we eat fish raw, uh, it comes with shali or rice, uh, cooked rice uh, with vinegar seasoning. Therefore, the timing of the best taste is different for sushi and for sashimi. There are four different types. This is immediately after ikijime. This is one day without ikijime. You can see that the meat is whitish and the stiff and the dry. This one is one day after ikijime, and this one uh, two days after ikijime. Surprisingly, when in the case of sushi, this one is the best for sushi, two days after ikijime. With time, more taste or umami is accumulated and it goes very well with sushi vinegared rice. Hirame, uh, on the day of ikijime, it does not get along with rice. Uh, rice is wet, but the, the fish meat on the day of ikijime is too fresh. So it doesn't mean that the anything fresh is the best. When you think about raw fish, 
where we do, first of all, ikijime, and remove nerves, and pay due attention to the changes brought about with the temperature and the time, so that the umami will be accumulated. And the best timing for sashimi is different from the best timing for sushi. Next, I would like to talk about how you store, how you should store fish. Concerning the fish, uh, people tend to believe that the, the taste is better if the uh, fish is fresh and it's better to store uh, at a lower temperature. But if you store at a very low temperature, I'm afraid we are actually promoting rigor motives and the accelerated rigor without the accumulation of uh, the umami. Uh, it's not tasteful. In order to cool it down, use a cloth or towel so that the, the, the cold wind would not uh, arrive at fish directly. And the temperature good for fish is 5 Celsius. Well, during the summer, the kitchen is very hot and you have to put it in the refrigerator. But during a cold winter time, actually, we don't put the fish uh, in a refrigerator. We keep fish at the room temperature of the winter time. That's better for maintaining good quality of fish meat. Next, I would like to talk about the cases of Suzuki fish, Japanese sea bass, and I would like to see the impact of ikijime on grilling. This one uh, is uh, with uh, ikijime, and the other one is without. This one is with ikijime. If you want to grill a fish, by doing ikijime, the blood is removed. By removing nerves, you can accelerate the ripening of taste. For grilled fish, the best timing is somewhat later than sashimi. If you grill fish good for sashimi, there would be no good taste. And uh, this one was stored in the refrigerator uh, to, for two days, and also uh, the, the head and the organs were removed. And uh, this is the day of uh, ikijime, and uh, the meat is alive and it's good as sashimi. This one is without ikijime. You can see that the meat is already getting white. And when you grill it, because of the lack of ikijime, you would smell the blood and the, the cooked meat would be somewhat dry. This shows you uh, the, the grilling with charcoal. This one is the, the Suzuki immediately after Ikijime. This is two days after Ikijime, and this one is without Ikijime. I think you can see the difference. Immediately after Ikijime, uh, the, the muscle is alive, so therefore the muscle start to shrink, shrink immediate, immediately. 
and uh, you cannot feel good taste. And the difference between the two may be difficult to see, but this one is without the ikijime, and it's whitish and uh, the dry. So for grilled fish, I want to tell you again that the applying ikijime technique is quite important. You can see that the water coming from the fish meat is not transparent. And uh, this one is immediate after ikijime and the, without the ripening, the muscles of the fish meat s simply shrink and get dry. If you think about the, uh, the, the grilling or the simmering, you have to get rid of the organs and the head, and you have to remove water using kitchen paper, and you wrap it and then you further wrap it and you keep it in the refrigerator. In Western countries, people think it's best to cook the fish you harvest today. It's best if you have nothing left in your refrigerator. Yes, it may be right, but for Japanese, because we have the technique of ikijime, uh, with ikijime, you can see the good progress of ripening. So if we are to grill fish, we back calculate and decide where we should put the fish in the refrigerator. Means in our shop, we always keep fish in the refrigerator. The size of the fish is quite important. It's a two kilogram or four kilogram. The time necessary for ripening is, is different. So. You have to pay subtle differences of the taste, and this is this depends on the ikijime. But you do the same thing for meat, animal meat. With time, the the animal meat gets more delicious, and it's same for fish. Yesterday, I did ikijime of hirabe, and I also have hirame without. Ikijime, we have some uh, for Mr. Dukas, and I would like to ask Mr. Dukas to try them and give us his comments. This one is without ikijime. Around here, you can see that the rigor is starting up. And this one is with ikijime, and uh, the meat is very alive. For how many days? This one is one day after ikijime. days same uh, this one is one day after uh, we were serving this one last night to the customer you can see the difference of the color this one is getting somewhat white this but the, this one remains transparent nature of color I think it may be better to apply some salt. <laughs> so 
So please try both. This one is without. Excuse me. This this one is without the ikijime. Uh, this one has ikijime. La consistance. Il a... I could feel the difference of the texture. I think this kind of uh, the, the bouncing uh, the texture is available only in Japan. So the issue is how you can export this texture itself. But uh, I knew that the fish in France is also of high quality. I think. Uh, the taste of French fish is thicker than the Japanese fish, or stronger than Japanese fish. This one is wonderful. I could see the difference of the texture when I have it in my mouth and chew it. Doesn't this one have some smell? Yes, I could uh, sense a big difference. Yes, you're really right. Don't you think something remaining after you have eaten it? Yes, I agree. The, the taste remaining is more comfortable and wonderful. With uh, the soy sauce and the sauce, the things would be further different. It's quite important that you successfully deliver a fish live to our restaurant. Thank you. Uh, you have to make a success uh, in delivering the fish live because that would make a big difference. It has a good texture. Interested after this program, uh, the, the sashimi is available, so please try it yourself. Uh, blessings of the earth. Now I'd like to talk about the vegetables. Another topic I'd like to introduce here is vegetables in Japan. In Japan, we have four distinct seasons, and each season we enjoy different kinds of vegetables. Let me start with the winter vegetables. Uh, in cold winter, leafy vegetables wither under cold weather. However, uh, vegetable uh, uh, root vegetables grow sweeter. 
the strength of Japanese vegetables are that they contain different kinds of minerals and very fresh and delicate in taste. They go very well with broth, dashi. And today I'd like to show you a Japanese classic simmered root vegetables, takiyawase. Takiyawase uh, is a way of cooking where each vegetable is prepared in a specific way and are flavored and all the vegetables are combined in one bowl. Uh, this uh, cooking is not fancy at all, but it really it shows and reveals the competence of the chef. Uh, different winter vegetables. Um, as you can see, in Japan we have very unique characteristic vegetables. This is called kabu turnips. We use a specific cutting knife, usuba bocho, which is used only for cutting vegetables. So we never use this cutting knife for cutting fish in filet or osashimi. Uh, by using this uh, cutting knife, we go through a technique called mendori, removing corner angles. Um, uh, the cut surfaces must be flat and smooth to uh, align fibers to prevent the cut pieces uh, uh, from being damaged while simmering. And uh, by using such knife, we can have a good luster on the surface. And we must use this specific cutting knife uh, for preparing and cutting in such a manner. Then initial preparatory boiling in togijiru, the cloudy water left after washing the rice. And by doing this, uh, the stickiness of rice uh, can absorb the harshness uh, of daikon, uh, and the daikon loses its harsh astringent taste. Uh, after initial boiling, the vegetables are rinsed with water uh, to wash off uh, the togejiru. Next is ebi imo. This is a kind of a sato imo or edo, sticky and sweet. Uh, just like turnip, we use uh, usuba bojo to remove corner angles. Uh, by cutting like this, we can uh, allow the vegetables to maintain their shapes even during the simmering process. Uh, ebimo uh, is also initially boiled in togijiru, cloudy water left over after rice was washed. And after initial boiling, uh, the vegetables are rinsed off with water uh, to take off togijiru, cloudy water. Next, uh, lotus roots. They have holes. Uh, they grow in uh, wetlands with a lot of water content. Uh, first, we wash the dirt off the surfaces. and peel the skin. After peeling the skin, uh, they are rinsed with water and the roots are stuffed with azuki beans. It is now wrapped with gauze and uh, wrapped around in a gauze and tied with kite string uh, to avoid soybeans from jumping out. <laughs> the initial boiling has to start from water, cold water. 
This is soy milk skin. The rolls of soy milk skin are grilled over a charcoal fire and then cooked in dashi broth. Next, spinach. Spinach is rinsed water uh, to remove the dirt off the surfaces and we remove hard stems and use leaves. This specific uh, spinach is called chijimi horenzo spinach, sweet and thick. Uh, they are uh, boiled in hot boiling water with a grain of salt. Uh, after they were cooked, uh, they are placed in ice water and the water must be drained thoroughly and they are cut into one bite size and they are soaked in dashi broth and dashi broth is flavored with a grain of salt and musuguchi shoyu light colored soy sauce uh, now we prepare a dashi jiru for simmering vegetables in. It is uh, made of uh, water, kelp, and uh, bonito flakes, and we are going to use a strong dashi flavor. Uh, in Japanese dishes, Japanese dishes are flavored mostly with kelp and bonito flakes. And therefore, vegetables are also flavored uh, by simmering them in bonito-based dashi. This is how I prepared the turnips uh, simmered in dashi. We add kelp to dashi and then flavor a dashi with salt and usukuchi shoyu, light colored soy sauce. Next, AB Imo. Again, uh, we add kelp to dashi and flavor with salt and light colored soy sauce. Next is a uh, uh, road as roots stuffed with azuki beans. Dashi is uh, flavored with uh, um, dark colored soy sauce, sugar, and mirin. Next, yuba, soy milk skin. Again, dashi is uh, flavored with salt and light colored soy sauce. Musukuchi mm -hmm. you. Thus, um, uh, this is a uh, meticulous work. You have to prepare each kind of vegetables in a different way, and uh, even a drop of oil is used. And this has been a very traditional classical way of uh, preparing and uh, simmering vegetables. Uh, through such a cooking method, we are able to bring out uh, uh, the flavor of terroir or ingredients and essence of vegetables grown in different locations. So this is uh, yuzu, citrus, uh, glated, uh, added as a garnish. It might be a bit hot. Uh, 
This really tastes excellent. A specialty from Kyoto indeed. Has a very rich flavor. It really tastes Kyoto. Uh, winter in Kyoto gets very cold, so turnips or ebi imo or sato imo edus uh, have been used traditionally in local dishes. It's perfect. The temperature is uh, just the right level and the taste. Uh, perfect also. Uh, vegetables are often simmered in dashi, and that is the way to bring out umami, strong umami out of ingredients. So without adding any droplet of uh, oil or adding something extra from outside, we try to bring out what vegetables have inside. Inherently, uh, that is the very unique feature of Japanese cuisine. Now I'd like to show you how to cook the spring vegetables, which are going into season um, as we uh, go about. I personally love spring vegetables. Each one of them has a very strong characteristic. Uh, when animals uh, wake up from hibernation, uh, the very first thing that they eat uh, is said to be a uh, vegetables in the wild, the spring vegetables. The spring vegetables have a strong apanya in high states. They seem to work as a factor for this detoxification uh, of their gas and the intestines. And that is why uh, the animals first eat the spring vegetables before they begin to eat meat. So today I'd like to once again uh, prepare each kind of a spring vegetables in a very specific manner and cook them in in dashi and without adding any droplet of oil, we can make them a wonderful and tasty dish. I'm going to use the 12 different kinds of spring vegetables. This is kogomi. Uh, ostrich fern and nanohana rapeseed flower. Uh, we remove uh, the hard part and cut into the right size. This is taranome, buds of uh, Japanese angelica tree. We remove the hard portions of the young buds. This is called tsubomina. Again, hard parts are removed and cut the piece into half, uh, just the right size for one bite. This is soramame beans. I take out the beans from the shell and take off a thin skin. This is called urui. Again, hard parts are removed and then cut uh, in such a manner to make it easy to cook. Next is mizuna vegetable and uh, they are cut into gobukiri size, the size of one bite. This is udo. Uh, for udo, we peel off in such a thin paper like form and by cutting it in such an oblique way. Uh, uh, the fibers are cut in a very specific orientation 
and they make up such an uh, interesting shape when it is arranged. Next, kogomi, urui, nanohana, tsubomi na, beans, and seri are boiled in salty water, and the water is removed and then uh, soaked in dashi jiru. Uh, dashi is uh, flavored with light colored soy sauce and salt. This dish is called ohitashi, vegetables soaked in dashi jiru. And so this is how it is prepared, and by soaking them in dashi, the umami taste of a dashi is absorbed by boiled vegetables. Next, how to prepare warabi bracken. Warabi bracken has a very high harshness, so we sprinkle charcoal ash and pour 90 degree hot water and they are sealed in aluminum foil and kept under a certain temperature and is uh, uh, let sit for one day. So this is uh, 90 degrees uh, temperature hot water. Uh, unless we have such a, a meticulous preparation beforehand, we cannot make a good vegetable after simmering. Uh, this is a uh, bracken after one day. You can see a vivid green color. And we wash off the charcoal ash. And using usuba bojo cutting knife, uh, cut in such a size. Uh, we drain the hot water after boiling to make sure that the charcoal ash is completely removed from the bracken. And then we flavor uh, bracken. Uh, dashi uh, is uh, flavored with usukuji soy sauce and mirin, and then we uh, simmer warabi in the uh, dashi. But if it is cooked too much, warabi becomes slimy. Therefore, the control of the flame is uh, very important. Next, bamboo. Shoots. First, uh, washing off the dirt well, and then remove the tip and uh, cut in such a manner to make uh, bamboo shoots uh, to cook easily. And then we place the rice brown, brown and uh, a chili in water uh, for initial boiling. By adding uh, rice bran in water, umami of uh, um, takenoko bamboo shoot is brought about. And also, uh, by increasing uh, the umami, uh, we can reduce, uh, mitigate a sense of uh, astringency or harshness. And also, uh, the spicy uh, chili reduces the sense of harshness. Um, it is uh, initially boiled for about two hours over a low. And then, after confirming that they are cooked well enough, uh, it is allowed to sit for one day. This is after one day. Uh, after it is cool enough, uh, we cut the tip in such a way. And this very hard part, uh, the root uh, is removed, and uh, the big bamboo shoot is uh, cut into half.
We drain the water after uh, the vegetable is uh, uh, boiled and to remove the uh, rice bran smell and uh, flavoring. And dashi is added with a small kelp and then salt. Uh, usukuchi, light colored soy sauce and dark colored soy sauce meeting and sweet sake and sake are added. Next is to make uh, sesame uh, cream. Uh, polished sesame seeds are roasted slowly uh, in a pan until they become light brown. Uh, while they are still hot, they are placed in a food processor to make it into a paste. Uh, then um, uh, they are thinned with boiled sake and flavored with dark colored soy sauce and sugar. Uh, this is sesame cream to go with the vegetables. So this is the last part, presentation. Twelve different kinds of spring vegetables were prepared, and we also uh, add uh, boiled firefly squid, and uh, they are garnished with the sesame cream to complete a plate. So this is how it was prepared. Uh, firefly squid and 12 different kinds of spring vegetables uh, seasoned with sesame cream. Uh, I often uh, prepare a very special spring dish for our guests. Uh, in spring, uh, uh, the shellfish uh, by Balbier come into season Akagai, Torigai, Miyogai, Hiragai, Shijimi, and Asami crumbs, Hamaguri, and Aoyagi. Spring is the season of uh, bivalves. I just uh, showed you how to uh, cook the spring vegetables and the spring vegetables and the shellfish make a very perfect match for a spring dish. And for hiragai, it is seared slightly and the inside remains raw, uncooked. And I am going to prepare a spring vegetables. Uh, this is a tairagai shellfish. It's beautiful artistic. I have no doubt it's tasty. Well, complexity sometimes makes the dish tastier, but in certain cases or well, in many dishes, simplicity can bring out the best of the ingredients without using even a, any a oil um, we can make uh, fabulous dishes by using dashi it's perfect chef thank you very much mr okuda the spring has come there's a bit of bitterness really 
is bringing spring to me. Yes, astringency or summer bitterness uh, are enjoyable. Uh, this is uh, the taste which we can enjoy only in here. And so fish and vegetables, besides them, there are so many wonderful, fabulous dishes we have in Japan. Uh, I sincerely hope that you will learn how to make them and spread them into the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. d i k a s Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please keep them at the time of the class. Once again.